Chini Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited yet another day because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is going to share with you all how easy it is to make a delicious, juicy, flavorful meatloaf. Not only are we going to make the meatloaf, we're going to make a whole meatloaf dinner and I'm going to show you how to make an amazing gravy. This recipe right here is so easy. Doesn't require a lot of ingredients, and if you make a Jeannie Young style, it's gonna be so tasty, hands down. Y'all never had my meatloaf before. Better make you some. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. So now, in my bowl here, I have two pounds of 80-20 ground beef, and then on top, I have a ground turkey. You're gonna need some veggies. So right here, we have some beautiful bell peppers, and you can see I have different colors because each one gives off a different flavor. Nice sweet Vidalia onion. We got two eggs and the eggs will help to bind together the meatloaf. And then we have some cornflake crumbs. We also have some ketchup and mustard. We have garlic and onion powder, salt and pepper bin, blend, excuse me, paprika. We have some mushrooms for our gravy, Worcestershire sauce, and beef broth. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple, yet yeah, so tasty recipe. So now I mentioned that we're going to be using cornflake crumbs. They would come in a box just like this, okay? This is the type of box that they come in and you can find them in the breadcrumb section. We'll be using between a half a cup and a cup. All right, so now let's go ahead right away and I wanna cut into this onion and cut into the bell peppers. We're gonna get them nice and chopped up. And then I have this pan here with a tiny bit of oil in there and we wanna saute up our bell peppers and onions. When you saute up bell peppers and onions, you give them some good flavor. They get nice and sweet and just like so tasty. Now, there is times that I've made meatloaf and I haven't, you know, sauteed the vegetables, we just kind of throw them in. But I just have to be honest and tell you all that when I do it this way and I saute them up, it tastes better, you hear me? Yes, it does. I hope y'all are having a great day today. With God on your side, let me know when's the last time you had some meatloaf. Meatloaf is something that I grew up on and we have to have it often here at the Young's house. It's amazing, so tasty, and there's nothing like a cold meatloaf sandwich the next morning, you hear me? Yes, on a piece of bread with a little bit of mayonnaise, woo-wee! Listen, here, my eyes are watering. Like a waterfall, I'm trying to play it off, right? <laughs> my eyes are watering. So when I come back, I'm getting my eyes all, all fixed up. <laughs> come back and then we'll chop up some bell peppers. Let's chop up some bell peppers. Like I said, what I love about using the different color bell peppers is each one gives off a different flavor. And I also love the beautiful color that's gonna shine through that gorgeous meatloaf. I love making a beautiful meatloaf. Listen here, if you don't know how to make it, you are the one that should be watching this video because Jeannie Young's gonna show you how to do it. And it's so easy. Meatloaf is easy to make, it's not hard. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. Now that the bell peppers are nice and chopped up, let's go ahead and saute them down until those onions are clear and translucent and the bell peppers get a little bit soft. Okay, so now let's make our way over this way. I'm gonna take my bling off here. We're gonna start mixing up meatloaf and it's so easy. Let's go ahead and season with the garlic, don't you? be afraid to season you hear me don't be that person that's afraid to season because if you're that person your food will be flavorless you don't you don't want that all right that's salt and pepper that we just went in with nice amount of paprika it's not smoked paprika this is onion powder can never have enough onion powder right and then we're going to go in with some ketchup about two to three tablespoons okay we will be using some mustard, and that's just about a tablespoon only. And then I wanna put in some Worcestershire sauce. Now here's how I like to do it. That's about it, okay? Great flavors there. I feel like not enough people use Worcestershire sauce. It's beautiful, 
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I wanna crack two eggs, two large eggs into our mixture. It's gonna help to hold the meatloaf together and kind of bind it, you know, just like so. Now there's one ingredient. Let's talk about something really quickly. There's one ingredient I almost forgot to tell you all about, but you know what? It's never too late. Milk. I like to use milk when I'm making a meatloaf because my grandma Lucille, she always put milk in her meatloaf. And she said that it would soften up the bread crumbs, you know? So I'm using the cornflake crumbs. Let's get them in there. This is a little over a half a cup, okay? And then since I didn't have any milk today, I'm gonna use some heavy cream and that's just fine. Just about that much and that's it. And guess what I'm gonna do? I'm getting ready to go in. I'm gonna wash my hands and arms up really good. I'm gonna go in just like so. Mixing everything and making sure that I don't mix it up too much because handling this meat can make it tough, believe it or not. And then when these veggies are done, we're gonna throw them in the refrigerator to cool them down because we don't wanna cook the raw egg. Okay, everyone, time to mix this up. So now, like I said, the key to successful meatloaf, do not handle the meat too much because you don't want it to be dry. Just make sure all of your ingredients are well incorporated, wham, bam, and that's it. So now, um, the bell peppers cooked for about seven minutes bell peppers and onions, and I put them in the freezer so they could cool down. So here in about 10 minutes, we'll come back and we'll mix in our bell peppers and onions. So now what I wanna do right now is I want to slice up some of these beautiful mushrooms. Excuse me. We're gonna slice up some of the mushrooms because these mushrooms are going into an amazing brown gravy I'm gonna show you how to make. So for the gravy, you're gonna need some oil. I'm using vegetable oil. I will also be using all-purpose flour. You can use cornstarch if you want it to, okay? And then we're gonna use the beef broth and a couple of seasonings to make this thing taste good. So when I get done with these mushrooms, I'll show you what we're gonna do next. So now in my pan for the gravy, I have some oil. All right, not a whole lot. And I want to saute up these beautiful mushrooms. Gotta hear that sizzle. You want these mushrooms to cook up. And then the next thing that we're gonna do, once the mushrooms get nice, beautiful, and they have a golden brown color, we're gonna then start to incorporate our flour and also our seasonings. And our seasonings are in here. It is onion and garlic powder, a little bit of chicken powder, and a salt and pepper blend, and our beef broth. So when I come back, you'll see these mushrooms are nice and golden brown. Now here are our sides. We have frozen sweet peas. That's the kind of peas we have. We don't eat the sweet peas out of the can. So now I'm gonna put one stick of butter. This is three bags of frozen peas. And then I'm gonna put around about a little bit, mm, I'd like to say a cup of water in there. We're gonna put some salt and pepper. And then I will put the desired amount of sugar in uh, right before they're done. Now, if you take a look over to the left, early this morning I made up some homemade mashed potatoes. Take a look. So now, when you're making a gravy, you always use equal parts fat, which is, it could be butter or oil. In our case today, we're using the oil. Equal parts fat, equal parts flour, okay? So I'm gonna eyeball mine because I know exactly how much I need. So there's the flour, okay? And you just want to incorporate the oil into the flour, just like so. Taking your time, you know, you got all the time in the world. You don't have to rush, okay? When you rush, you mess things up. Okay, so you see how I'm incorporating the flour into the oil? I'm gonna do this until all of that flour is well incorporated into the oil, and we're gonna cook that flour for about five minutes to get that raw taste out of the flour. So we let our roux mixture and the mushrooms cook together for about, I'd like to say five to eight minutes. And now we're going to incorporate our broth. If you don't have broth, just use some, um, like some bouillon, you know, and mix it with water to make broth. And we're just gonna stir vigorously until we achieve a gravy consistency. Y'all know what gravy consistency looks like. Okay, so have this up on a medium heat and literally right before your own eyes, this will begin to thicken up. And once it thickens up, we're gonna go in and season. 
So now I've put a little bit of parsley in there for color. We're going to go in with that salt and pepper blend, just like so. And I am going to be putting uh, bouillon powder in here. Onion and garlic powder, just like so. And that right there is our gravy. It's thickening up in the flavor from the mushroom. Listen here. You would love to pour this over top of your meatloaf. If you're one of those sticklers and you don't like your gravy to be light, put some kitchen bouquet in there. Kitchen bouquet does not have flavor, but it does have something in it that's going to give it a nice dark color. So that's what I like to use to turn my gravy a little bit darker. Time to make the meatloaf. Hands impeccably clean. You can see that I put the cooled down bell peppers and onions in our mixture and keep in mind that we've already mixed it once so just a quick mix up just to get those peppers and onions in and then i'm going to show you how i like to make my meatloaf loaf <laughs> okay everybody so you pour your mixture into your desired pan okay and then you just push the sides just like so push you know the two outside pieces and then you begin to smooth the top if you have like, let's just say there's a cut right here, you just seal it up. Seal it up so all your good juices don't come running out. And then when you have the desired shape that you're looking for, that's when we're gonna get this into the oven. But before it goes into the oven, I usually like to put like a half a cup of beef broth or either water in the bottom of my pan, okay? We're gonna be cooking this 350 degrees. And when this baby is ready, we're gonna take it out and I'm gonna show you how to put a beautiful sauce on top of the meatloaf. Got the broth in there. Let's put it in the middle rack, 350 degrees. And when it's done, I'll tell you how long we cooked it. Everybody wants to know where Prince and Polo is. There's Polo and there is Prince. Hey, can you guys say hi? What the heck? Look at him. Just had a bath. Look at him. <laughs> can you guys say hi? It's been a while since they seen you. We got Prince right here, just coming up to the camera. And look at Polo, look at him. <laughs> Say hi, guys. Oh my goodness. Okay, everyone, it's been 45 minutes and our meatloaf looks like this, beautiful. There was a whole lot of juice in the bottom of that pan, right? But I poured it out because we don't need it, all right? But what that juice will do is keep your meatloaf nice and juicy. So take a look at what I'm doing. Now, there is some times where I'll turn around and make a sauce to put on top of the meatloaf, but today's not one of those days because we also have gravy. So what I'm doing, I'm just using uh, ketchup and I'm just basting it nice and neatly this goes back into the oven for another 15 minutes and then dinner will be served when i come back i'm gonna say an amazing prayer we're gonna slice down into this baby and you get that first bite take a look at it everybody our beautiful meatloaf cooked for one hour the last 15 minutes of the cooking process we smeared it with the beautiful tomato sauce and continued to cook it for another 15 minutes Here's what it looks like. But listen, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Don't go nowhere yet because you want to see the inside. You want to see how juicy and supple and how delicious this is. And you get that first bite. So here's what it looks like right now. When I come back, it's going to be plated up. We're going to slice into it. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know, heck, tell the whole world about Jeannie Young, what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Let's go ahead and say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you once again for a beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for your love time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts and make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels to surround us day and night, your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace of our minds in the name of Jesus. We pray that no weapons formed against us shall prosper. And we bind the devil away from us in Jesus' name. Devil, you have no authority. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace and the joy you bring us every day. Amen. Take a look at it, everybody. Look at this. If your meatloaf doesn't look like this in the inside, you did something wrong. Look at that. Oh, the instructions were so easy. Follow this recipe, Gina Young style. 
you're going to be happy. Oh, look how juicy. Oh my goodness. That right there, that's a meatloaf. Gina Young style. Amen. Once again to my beautiful prayer, take a look. <laughs> take a look. I got to give you the 360. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got to get the 360. Look at this. This meatloaf is so tender. You hear me? I can already tell. Like I said, amen once again to my prayer. I'm going to give you all a bite. And when you have meatloaf, you got, oh, <laughs> you got to do that. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know how hot this is. Now, normally what I'll do is I'll dip this in the potatoes. I'll dip it in the um, peas and you eat everything all together. But we're just going to do the meatloaf for right now. Take a bite. Let me know what you think. I'm going in. Mmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. I'm coming. I'm getting ready to drizzle the drizzle the drizzle 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 baby. <laughs> oh yeah, don't forget about that gravy. That's what we made it for. Uh-huh. All right. Oh, this is so good. Mm. Make you some genie on style. God bless. Good night. Mm.